Good day, beloved in Christ. Welcome to prayer for Thursday, February the 11th. Let's take a deep breath as we begin, and then we'll sing together. Lord, open our lips together, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us worship. The Venite, and Venite is Latin for the first word of the piece we sing right now, Come. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we have two psalms appointed, 146 and 147. These are, of course, two of the last five psalms in the Psalter, and they all begin with the word hallelujah, a call to praise. I'm going to be reading from Eugene Peterson's translation of the Bible, The Message, His is a very fluid translation, which uses simple, common-day language, colloquial language even. And this reflects the fact that Scripture was written in very common language, the common person's language, long before it gained a veneer of sacramentalism and became specialized language and holy language. This gets right to the heart of the simplicity of the message in common language. Psalm 146, and then I'll conclude each psalm with the psalm prayer found in the BAS, the Book of Alternative Services, which includes a uniquely written prayer for at the conclusion of each of the psalms. Psalm 146. O my soul, praise God. All my life long I'll praise God, singing songs to my God as long as I live. Don't put your life in the hands of experts who know nothing of life, of salvation life. Mere humans don't have what it takes. When they die, their projects die with them. Instead, get help from the God of Jacob. Put your hope in God and know real blessing. God made sky and soil, sea and all the fish in it. He always does what he says. He defends the wronged. He feeds the hungry. God frees prisoners. He gives sight to the blind. He lifts up the fallen. God loves good people, protects strangers, takes the side of orphans and widows, but makes short work of the wicked. God's in charge always. Zion's God is God for good. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God, our Creator and Redeemer, inspire your people in prosperity or adversity to turn always to you, eternal source of life, health and goodness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then Psalm 147. Hallelujah! It's a good thing to sing praise to our God. Praise is beautiful. Praise is fitting. God's the one who rebuilds Jerusalem, who regathers Israel's scattered exiles. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. He counts the stars and assigns each a name. Our Lord is great with limitless strength. We'll never comprehend what He knows and does. 
God puts the fallen on their feet again and pushes the wicked into the ditch. Sing to God a thanksgiving hymn. Play music on your instruments to God who fills the sky with clouds preparing rain for the earth. Then, turning the mountains green with grass, feeding both cattle and crows. He's not impressed with horsepower. The size of our muscles means little to him. Those who fear God get God's attention. They can depend on his strength. Jerusalem, worship God. Zion, praise your God. He made your city secure. He blessed your children among you. He keeps the peace at your borders. He puts the best bread on your tables. He launches his promises earthward. How swift and sure they come. He spreads snow like a white fleece. He scatters frost like ashes. He broadcasts hail like birdseed. Who can survive his winter? Then he gives the command, and it all melts. He breathes on winter. Suddenly it's spring. He speaks the same way to Jacob, speaks words that work to Israel. He never did this to the other nations. They never heard such commands. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God of the universe, Lord of life, give us grace to see you in all your works, in all creatures, all people, and in our hearts, that we may faithfully serve you and worthily praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with our reading of the letter Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 to 26. This is reading from the Good News Translation, which was um, done way back in the late 70s, I believe, with the same idea as Eugene Peterson to translate the original documents into more common level spoken English. Here, Paul is giving instructions to Timothy on how to help the congregation grow. Remind your people of this and give them a solemn warning in God's presence not to fight over words. It does no good, but only ruins the people who listen. Do your best to win full approval in God's sight as a worker who is not ashamed of his work, one who correctly teaches the message of God's truth. Keep away from profane and foolish discussions, which only drive people farther away from God. Such teaching is like an open sore that eats away the flesh. Two men who have taught such things are Hymenaeus and Philetus. They have left the way of truth and are upsetting the faith of some believers by saying that our resurrection has already taken place. But the solid foundation that God has laid cannot be shaken, and on it are written these words, The Lord knows those who are His, and those who say that they belong to the Lord must turn away from wrongdoing. In a large house there are dishes and bowls of all kinds. Some are made of silver and gold, others of wood and clay, some are for special occasions, others for ordinary use. Those who make themselves clean from all those evil things will be used for special purposes because they are dedicated and useful to their master, ready to be used for every good deed. Avoid the passions of youth and strive for righteousness, faith, love, and peace, together with those who, with a pure heart, Call out to the Lord for help, but keep away from foolish and ignorant arguments. You know that they end up in quarrels. As the Lord's servant, you must not quarrel. You must be kind toward all, a good and patient teacher, who is gentle as you correct your opponents, for it may be that God will give them the opportunity to repent and to come to know the truth. And then they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who had caught them and made them obey his will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As always, there's a lot of good godly advice and teaching in this passage. I'll summarize it in two ways. Be approved and be set apart. Be approved and be set apart. 
be approved. Be approved of God. Seek God's approval. This reminds me of a program our children were involved in in a local church when they were young. It's called the AWANA program, A-W-A-N-A, -A, AWANA. And that's a short for approved workmen are not ashamed. Approved workers are not ashamed. And that comes from verse 15 here. Be approved, seek to be approved by God. This means that we should seek to find favor with God, to live in a way pleasing to God, rather than our culture uh, and others around us. For if we seek to please God, then really that's the most important thing in life. This is to be done with an attitude of courage, of trusting in God, of being confident in God's and God's ways of being in the world so that we're not ashamed. Be confident, not ashamed of the good news which is in us and God's calling upon our lives. Secondly, be set apart. Paul is teaching using the idea of the reality that we have different kinds of dishes and bowls for different purposes made from different materials. This is true in our own day as well. You've got carving platters, dinner dishes, salad plates, dessert plates, bowls, all have their own special use. And Paul is saying we have our own special use. We are to be set apart for God's service. And this in the life of Timothy would look like avoiding needless quarrels and teaching kindly, patiently, and gently, being a good teacher. Though we are not all teachers, we all can seek to be set apart for God's service in our own way of life, in our own calling, in our own work vocation, in our own status in life. Whether we are single or married, we are called to be set apart for service of God, to be kind, gentle, patient, good disciples of Jesus at work in the world. Very practical advice for us today. Be approved of God. Be set apart. May the Lord help us in our vocation. Let us now turn toward intercession and today we will be following the theme of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to God always and for everything saying, we thank you, Lord, for the beauty and wonder of creation, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ, for those frontline workers who put themselves at risk to serve us, for our health care providers, vigorously laboring to be of service and healing to those who are struggling with COVID and other afflictions, for them, we thank you, Lord, for our daily food, for our homes, families, and friends, for minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. Lord, we thank you for health and strength and for leisure to rest and play, for those who are brave and courageous patient in suffering, and faithful in adversity. Lord, we thank you for all who pursue peace, justice, and truth, for your calling upon our lives to seek your approval, to be approved of you, and to be set apart. Lord, we thank you. And I invite you to pause our Recording to offer your own thanksgivings to God. Consider the hope of the vaccine. Consider all our blessings. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Three quick announcements before we go. Really would ask and encourage you to support our Chinese ministry by coming to our Chinese New Year celebrations on February the 14th. Uh, 1230, you can join us to eat your Chinese lunch if you like. And then at one o'clock, we'll have the Zoom presentation of all the Chinese entertainment. That'll last about an hour. You will be blessed and enjoy that time together. Secondly, we have Shrove Tuesday coming. Again, similar idea. If you'd like to eat pancakes with us on Zoom at seven o'clock, we will have at 730 a short evening prayer to help us turn the corner into Lent. And then thirdly, Ash Wednesday coming up this coming Wednesday. Um, ashes will be available for pickup at the church. If you would just let us know you're coming by phoning the office, we'll make sure that on Thursday and Friday this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, there will be ashes and little packets with a little uh, Ash Wednesday service for you to pray at home for your imposition of ashes at home. That'll be just outside the church doors. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful, blessed day, Thursday.